Well, Coach, I think Mark just joined in. Um, hey, Mark. He's getting there. I think he's signing on. All right, good. Hey, Coach Aaron, how are you? Coach, some of I think our guests are pretty much muted, unless uh, unless Maddie, who's on the call, uh, unmutes. I thought you said that myself and Aaron and Mark and you. Aaron's good. Yeah, Aaron is good. Yep, he's good now. Hey guys. Hey Aaron. I'm gonna reposition myself. Should I be on video, guys? I think it's great to see you. Well, y'all, it's Doug Hartsima on the call. I see Doug. How are you doing? How are you guys? Uh, great. I got, uh, I got my wife's computer because mine doesn't have a camera. So first thing after this COVID is I'm going over to the IT and getting a better computer. So. <laughs> want to hey i'm not touching any buttons because if i do i'll screw this thing up so hmm. Coach, i have a lot of confidence you'll, you'll manage just fine you'll be great well, coach you know we, we have well over 100 people signed up for today and Ton of questions, ton of questions that came in on the front end, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, they're all easy. They're all easy questions. How about that? I love easy questions. <laughs> Give you hard answers. What's up, D. Lou? Yeah, I can only see I can only see four people across the top. I'm afraid to try to see more people because I'll do something wrong here. Well, in a in a little bit, Coach, we will uh, we'll be changing the screen. We have our welcome welcome up, so you should be able to see a few more folks. Right, good. Yeah, at the, at the side there, are those uh, videos, Coach. There's a little arrow. Yeah. And if you click that, you'll see four new people and on, you know, so on and so forth. So. Four new people. By the way, uh, Mark, if you could, we just want to. Test your uh, test your screen and volume if possible, Mark. If you're still on, I hope it's. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. My camera won't work. That's okay. Why? Um, better looking with no picture. Yeah. Here it goes. <laughs> we're we're not even a minute in on this thing, Coach, and we're already starting. I know you got a couple of good stories to tell, so we're looking forward to that. Um, we're gonna give give some folks uh, just one more minute or so before before starting. But uh, for those on the call, welcome um, to our program update with the men's golf team. I have Coach Jerry Haas, Coach Aaron O'Callahan, and Mark Power um, on the call. This call today. Um, this program update is brought to us through uh, Kelly Office Solutions, and uh, we're excited that uh, our program updates have picked up so much momentum uh, that we uh, have been able to partner with a few, few different companies here in Winston and uh, excited and appreciative of, of that support. Um, just a couple of ground rules before we get going. Um, if, if you could, please make sure that your, um, your line is on mute uh, as we use this, as we go through this call. Um, we've had a lot of questions submitted in advance, um, but uh, if you do have any questions, there's a little chat feature, or at least there should be, um, once we change the screen for you to be able to uh, submit some questions as we go along for, for Coach or for Mark, um, and I'll, I'll do my best to get to those questions as we, uh, we get going here momentarily. Um, so uh, as we uh, as we look to get started, and I think now's probably the no better time than ever to tee it up, Coach. You you ready, Coach? I'm ready. Yeah, I've been ready. Good de great. Good deal. Well, um, we're grateful for everyone that is uh, joining in for the call today, and uh, appreciative of that. 
and uh, look forward to uh, coach hearing from you. And, you know, it's, uh, I think everybody wants to make sure you're safe. It almost looks like a hostage situation in there. Can you tell us how your family's doing and where you're at? Uh, I'm actually in my detached barn here that we've made into a, a hitting range. You see, I got my Deacon man hanging there in a big net. Uh, you can't see the ground, but I've got about a 24 foot putt here and then a, uh, a nice mat here to hit some balls. So I sneak down here at night every now and then, kind of my, uh, my getaway, if you will, and, and hit a few. And it's, uh, it's very nice. Uh, I did a thing with Orange Whip last week from in here, and I didn't realize I looked like a hostage. But I, I'm, in, I'm in good shape right now. <laughs> You're in good shape. Are you playing some hoops? I know that was a question that came in over the, uh, over the early submissions. I have not played any hoops. I miss it. Uh, I have uh, emailed and texted with the, the group, and uh, we all miss it. It's great camaraderie and uh, kind of something that uh, – we love to do it wake and we got all kinds of uh, different people from the athletic department and from the university and shoot dr hatch is actually pretty good he wears the big uh, sky goggles like james worthy and uh, he's a very very good mid-range shooter do you let him win or do you you all compete pretty hard we compete pretty hard but you can't run too fast there he, he gets mad at you winding a little bit you got to slow the pace down a little bit Use the whole whole 24 second shot clock. There you go. Well, I also want to uh, call attention, Coach Aaron. How are you today? Hey, Mike. I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, thanks for setting all of this up. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Sounds great. And then Mark. Um, Mark wanted to give you a chance just to say hello. Yeah, hey everyone, and uh, big thanks to Mike for. Um, facilitating the call today and hope everyone's keeping well uh, in these pretty tough times um, but I'm doing okay so far. Mark uh, thank you for being a part of it and it's exciting to have you uh, a part of this program update. Mark if you could wh where are you today in the world? Yeah I'm in my kitchen in Kilkenny Ireland uh, played a nice round of golf this morning um, but apart from that I'm just sitting tight at home uh, there's not much really going on, no, no real tournaments than that. So um, just sticking, sticking put at home. Well, we're glad uh, you and your family are safe and, uh, and doing well. And, and I'm sure it's, uh, it's nice to be able to get out and play again. Um, Coach was sharing a little bit that there were some pretty heavy restrictions on what you could do and where you could go for a while. Um, how, how was it managing that? Yeah, it was quite frustrating, but it was actually okay at the same time because um, I suppose we still had schoolwork to do, so I could kind of just focus on schoolwork for a while and get through my final exams. Um, and my grades were pretty good, so I kind of spent most of the time focusing on school. And then um, May 18th, the golf course is open back up here again, so uh, I'd finish all my schoolwork and I'd get back practicing again. So uh, it's actually been an okay balance. That's a, that was probably pretty good timing, May 18th, letting you run again. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <out> <laughs> <laughs> Got good grades somehow, so I did okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll, we'll touch on some of those topics, Mark, here in a little bit. And uh, again, thank you for for being on the call and congratulations on on the season and, and the year you were having. And we're so glad you're a deacon. Yeah, um, yeah. Co coach, if you could, uh, Coach Haas, maybe share a little bit about what what you know COVID nineteen and, and the impact it's had, kind of on you and your family, and and just you kind of personally, how, how have you all been doing? I think like everybody, it's um, it's kind of come in stages. At first, it was, um, man, what am I going to do with myself? And then after a little bit, it's like, okay, I, I see a little light at the end of the tunnel. They're going to put things back and pushing back. And I think that's the frustrating thing for everybody. Um, my family's fine. I'm fine. Um, I've got to know the membership at Old Town Club pretty well. I've got to play a lot more golf than I ever had time of year. Uh, same with Coach Aaron. We've we've had some good games over there at, at Old Town, and um, it, I miss the guys. I, I always tell people the best part for coaches is when you get in that van and you roll off campus and go to an event, because then you see where you're at. You see what how how have we developed these guys? How has their game improved? How are they getting ready for ACCs and NCAA? So that's kind of the difficult thing. Um, we are a team, but at the same time, golf is very individualistic. So 
everybody kind of works on different things. I know there for a while, Mark could only hit into a net in his backyard and then go back in the house. Same with Alex. So uh, over in England. So it's everybody kind of has to do their thing. I think mentally is going to be the most difficult thing for this. Um, uh, my son finally got to play a junior tournament in North Carolina, it just opened back up, and I think it went really well this weekend from what I could see with the social distancing and all that, and they, everybody's leaving the flag sticks in. And, and so I think we're going to become like everybody's talking about the new normal, but um, it, it's all good. We are uh, we're in a really healthy spot, I feel. I think we're going to, fingers are crossed, but the next three to five years should be some really, really good golf like it's been. I mean, we're shooting scores now that uh, we've never shot before and uh, academically doing very well, and we'll touch on that later. But uh, forest in whole, in, in my opinion, it's, it's okay to be small at this point in time. It's okay to be one of the smaller schools. I think it's a big advantage. Coach, I, I would share this, and I, I know you're alluding to it, is just the leadership at Wake Forest and in the community in Winston-Salem, you know, over the span of the last 10 weeks and everything that has evolved and, and happened, not just COVID-19, but uh, we've been very fortunate to be in this community and um, a lot of credit to the university leadership um, for President Hatch, and John Curry, and through so many others that have helped try to keep the community safe and keep the community aware and, and educated on on ways to be able to uh, kind of handle everything that, that's happening. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I mean, there's there's so many committees that we don't even know about that are trying to figure things out and what's best for the student athletes, what's best for the just the regular students. You know, how are we going to get football? And how are we going to get sports? And, um, there's all this talk, and I think it's pretty fluid. It changes and changes and changes. So as a golf team, in this case, we have to keep preparing like we are going to start on time, which I'm pretty sure, uh, which is great news. I think that gives people uh, a hope and a positivity that things are moving in the right direction. And, uh, uh, we're kind of getting back to being ourselves again and getting back to our routine. Uh, one thing I know I've kind of observed is you got to allow more time to do things. You've got to allow more time to get places to sometimes there's a line outside a store. You can't just race into a store and, you know, there's a lot more etiquette, if you will, a lot of more protocol about slowing down. And I think that will, uh, will certainly help a guy like me who's always in a big hurry trying to get somewhere. I don't think anybody on this call was thinking that, Coach. I don't know what you are. <laughs> well, etiquette and golf go hand in hand. So hopefully our, our, our young men, Mark, yourself included, and, and young women um, that are a part of the program and, and the university could be leaders on campus and um, help us kind of all in, in all respects um, kind of move forward and, and move forward in the right way. Um, Mark, I, a couple of questions that, that have come in have just been how has you know, it been for you socially? Coach alluded to just really challenging at different times about how you can get away from the house and, and things you need to do. How, how have you been able to keep up with your teammates? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty it's been pretty tough. But I mean, I suppose you know technology nowadays you can contact anyone from any side of the world. So um, we've had some Zoom calls just to check in on everyone, and I've just been keeping in contact with most of the guys. And um, from what it looks like, most of the guys have still been able to keep playing golf, which is which is ideal, I suppose, for uh, for the team. And I've been doing a little bit of practice in the back garden, as coach said, and uh, it's nice to get back out in the course again now. And I think um, I think everyone's, you know, keeping in in good shape, and um, we'll definitely be ready to go when we when we get back on campus. Mark, I know you know on occasion there's some. Uh maybe competitive spirit and, and maybe a little bit of trash talking on the golf course. Is that happening online amongst you and your, uh, your teammates? A little bit. Yeah. We like to keep the, the heavy stuff for in person a bit more out of effect, but a little bit on, on, online. Yeah. But nothing crazy. Coach had a pretty good story. Coach, I don't know if now's the time to share it about what made you uh, smile when you were playing with Mark one of the first times. Yeah. We, um, first time we played together was at old town and we went off the backside that day. 
you know, I'm very competitive. Coach Aaron's very competitive. You know, I'm wanting to, to beat this guy, I try to stay in shape and try to wait, maybe lead by example and show him. And I made a nice putt on 18 to shoot two under on the back. And I looked at Mark and I said, that's two under. And he just stared at me, didn't say anything. And then he made about a beautiful 20 footer left to right, right in the middle. And as he got it out of the hole, he looked at me and he goes, coach, that's three under. <laughs> I, I knew right then, I'm like, oh, I like this kid. He's competitive. Uh, he took it the right way. You know, I was trying to, uh, to put a little pressure on him, if you will, try to give him the needle a little bit, but he, he handled it beautifully. And, um, I mean, what a year he had finished, um, very strong. He would have been freshman of the year in the ACC. Unfortunately, they didn't award that award, which, uh, I, I feel bad for him. He did make second team all American, which is very impressive right out of the gate. And, and on top of that. Um, what a wonderful young man, uh, great teammate, um, great to be around, um, just observing him and watching him, Coach Aaron and I watch him play. And if it's just a regular round and he's got a tough shot and he pulls it off, you know, he's got the fist pump. He, he gets excited about that, not like, oh, yeah, I should have done that or whatever. He very uh, humble, very graceful, uh, just a really, really talented young man and uh, very thankful that he plays for Wake. I, I know that for sure. Go Deeks. Coach, maybe now's the time. Uh, one of the questions that came in from uh, Track Buxton was just tell a little bit about the bios and, and the background of our guys that are returning, if you could, and, and maybe a little bit about if, if it's allowed for some of the incoming young men. Um, okay, I'll do I'll do the juniors and seniors, and I'll let Aaron do the younger guys. Uh, well done. Uh, we'll start with our seniors. Um, graduating was Charlie Kennerly. He's got a really nice job up in New York. I'm so excited for him. Um, he was voted best teammate of the year last year, the award we created um, and uh, in honor of Chad Wilfong, who played for me. And uh, Chad's a great friend. And in these times, I've got to play with a bunch of former players. And I realized that we are recruiting some really good people and some really good fathers and human beings. And um, as I'm getting later in my career, I realize how important that is. Um, Eric Bay was a senior. We had to petition the NCAA to try to get him back for his senior year. It worked out great. Eric will be returning. Uh, he's our top uh, wagger guy, which is the world amateur golf ranking. So uh, we returned a really, really good kid there, uh, a, a good teammate, great student. He's going to get a, uh, a master's in the business school for one year, um, which so he still has some hard work ahead of him, but it should be. Uh, doable with his golf and um, he's returning and then the uh, the other seniors if you will will be Parker Gillum and Marco Stain. Um, Parker shot 60 at the uh, Bahamas event and like a knucklehead coach I played him as an individual if I'd have known he was going to shoot 60 I would have put him in the lineup but um, he shot 60 which was uh, only the 14th time anyone shot 60 in college golf uh, uh, Paul Casey, uh, a couple other names you've heard of uh, have shot it. So that was incredible. He shot 17 under and got himself in a, a PGA Tour event for winning. That was his second college win, uh, kind of under the radar. And he's gotten better and better and better and, and has worked incredibly hard in the weight room and on the golf course. Uh, and then Marco Stain will be a senior as well. He's doing an intern right now at Greensboro. And... Um, a very, very talented young man. He's played uh, quite a bit for the first three years. And I, you know, I've talked to him on the side and said, look, this is your time to step up and, uh, and be one of our better players. He beat uh, a bunch of South African pros before he even got to college, uh, won a professional event as an amateur. Um, he unfortunately just doesn't know how good he is. And Coach Aaron and I are trying to tell him that. Uh, he's really talented. Uh, he's one of our best players. and. Um, he needs to uh, have that hunger his senior year. And um, you're talking right there. You, you know, we've already talked to Mark, but Eric and uh, Parker and Marco, and now Coach Aaron will tell you about our younger guys in our, our class coming in. So you can see why we're excited. Yeah, so uh, looking at our junior class for next year, um, the great Alex Fitzpatrick, uh, younger brother of uh, European tour member Matthew Fitzpatrick. 
uh, but Alex is a, a wonderful young man, um, very enjoyable to be around, arguably the best guy I've ever seen with a lob wedge, and I, I think coaches uh, would probably agree with me on that. Uh, very powerful player and um, has turned into an incredibly consistent player. Um, number of top tens in the fall and, and continue that great form into the spring and uh, again a second team All-American this year and Walker Cup player um, as well as being selected for the Palmer Cup team that will compete in December. Um, then uh, Alex will be our, our lone junior uh, next year and then um, you know Mark as we've talked about before will be a, will be a sophomore um, known Mark for a long time, recruited him at my previous institution at, at Louisville and um, actually played a competitive match against his father. Believe it or not, his mother is from the same golf club that I grew up at. Um, so uh, some great connections there, but I think the world of Mark and um, very proud of the way he's come in and really uh, lit, the, lit the world on fire. Um, we also have Fulton Smith from Pinehurst. Uh, wonderful player. Um, we've seen massive growth and, and development in his game and uh, Coach and I are, are very excited about uh, what he's going to look like next year. He's probably put on maybe 15 pounds of muscle since he's got here and um, I think that's actually improved a little bit of his, his technical ability and stability um, through the ball. Um, wonderful chipper and putter and, and uh, what we what we both love as coaches is competitiveness. You know, Fulton loves to, to play matches and hates to lose. Uh, we also have a great young man in Daniel Shee uh, from the West Coast, just outside of San Francisco. Daniel is a, um, I think the, the the best thing that we can say about Daniel's golf game is that he really really wants to get better, and that's a coach's dream. He he comes to practice every day and has a plan. Um, attacks his weaknesses. Um, had unfortunately got some injuries. Um, his health wasn't so so good throughout the, his first year, and picking up flu and um, viruses, and and then having some wrist issues. But thankfully, he's had that operation that that set him back for a while. And we've got a medical red shirt uh, for Daniel. So although he's going into his sophomore year, um, he still has four years of eligibility left, which we're excited about. Um, and then we've got three players coming in. Um, Michael Brennan from Leesburg, Virginia. Um, arguably the best player in, in uh, the 2020 class. Uh, certainly performed very well and, and consistently over the last couple of years. And um, Coach and I have watched him extensively and uh, certain that he is a, you know, he's going to be a big impact player for Wake Forest and uh, very excited about him. Uh, recently won the Byron Nelson Award um, and uh, just a terrific student. Um, we also have uh, BJ Rohilio from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, BJ and myself have a connection. Uh, when I worked in Louisiana at, at Country Club of Louisiana, uh, I met BJ. He was probably 11 or 12 years old and um, he was a kid that hung out at the, at the pro shop and, and the driving range and would go, you know, play 18 holes with, with the members every single day. Um, could see right away that, you know, he loved the game and was was passionate about getting better. And um, as, it, as it came, I, I watched him at the junior PGA um, last summer, or sorry, two summers ago, and uh, incredibly impressed with how he's developed. He's a, a big, strong young man and um, got exceptional golf swing. Um, so... I think just with a little bit of um, course management and, and coaching, uh, again, very exciting player. And then we have um, Clay Steersman from Carmel, Indiana. Uh, Clay uh, is a former camper, which uh, coach would have connected with uh, a number of years ago. Uh, just a fantastic uh, young man, going to be a, a great representative representative of Wake Forest and what we're about, uh, the ultimate gentleman. Um, on top of that, uh, he's transformed his body over the last six months, um, incredibly strong, and his work ethic um, is true to roof. 
So Clay is going to be an explosive player. He's uh, uh, very diligent about how how to get better and puts plans in place to to do so. And um, again, very eager to learn and um, excited. I know to to be part of Wake Forest. So we're we're extremely pleased with what we have and what's coming in. I think uh, coach and I feel like the program is in a wonderful spot and can't wait to to put you know. Uh, 10 wonderful people in, in, in a room and, and watch the competitiveness flow. I, I bet you guys dream about that day to be able to get everybody back together and absolutely and be able to watch them come. I mean, congratulations to both you coaches, not only for, you know, um, how you're developing these young men, but in, in general, just um, all the, the success this past year and over the last, you know, few years. Um, Certainly a, a wonderful following of Wake Foresters and fans and community members. And uh, I think a lot of it has to do because of the young men you have and how uh, how great they are and wonderful they are to the, the people that they interact with. And um, we're, we're proud of every one of them and look forward to meeting the new ones. Uh, Mark, Coach Aaron has talked a lot about kids bulking up. Um, you know, I think one thing of interest is just what what is strength and conditioning? How, how has coming to the support staff been like for you? Um, academic services, or I think Dave Bass works with you all. Is that right? For strength and conditioning. How is, uh, how's that gone, Mark? Yeah, Coach Bass is great. Um, I suppose the biggest shock when I got on campus was, uh, was that we were going to have half 6.30 in the morning um, workouts Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, you know, the first few weeks of that, you're kind of just, you know, you're just trying to get through it. But then, you kind of realize there's a sacrifice you need to make to really excel in college golf and um i think the stuff we've been doing is really good i personally i feel like my body is um is coming on nicely i was kind of skinny as i came in but i feel i'm starting to load out a little bit more and that was kind of one of the big goals i had just to um just to kind of build a bit more stability to my body and um you know the work we've been doing has really been helping and i suppose during lockdown coach has been kind of liaising with us um, with the new team builder website so we can still do workouts and he can track what we're doing and um, the progress has been really good so um, yeah coach Bass is great. That's, that's awesome to hear and, and coach uh, Haas maybe in a minute or two we'll talk about some of that and coach Aaron some of the incorporation of technology and and ways we're using that as a program I think folks would find some of that certainly interesting uh, to know how our young men are, are using those those pieces of uh, tactic to get better um, and stay fit and keep their game on point. Um, Mark, how, how about academic uh, support while you're, you're what, how many hours, uh, how many hours, I guess, uh, ahead and, and, and everything, you know, pretty much this whole time trying to manage classes and study hall, maybe. How did that go? It was actually quite simple. I suppose we're so lucky that we have um, Kristen Wise, our, our academic counselor, I guess you could say um, she she just looks after us so well. Um, I I had a meeting with her Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, it would have been two o'clock my time, so I guess nine a.m. Um, American time. So we kind of just found a time that suited us. And Kristen would just kind of make sure I have everything in order with schoolwork and um, just anything, any any real questions or any help I needed. Kristen was always there to help me. And we're very lucky that we have someone like Kristen to you know, keep an eye on us and make sure we're um, excelling in the classroom as well as uh, to give us the opportunity to to do our best on the golf course. So um, Kristen's been great and she's definitely um, helped me keep keep on top of things and has definitely helped my grades. So, um, yeah, we're very lucky to have someone like Kristen kind of looking after us. I, uh, I was uh, very fortunate for my academic support team member when I was in school at Wake Forest. Um, I was always reminded that it, was, it would probably be helpful if I bought the textbooks uh, at the start of the semester as well. So I learned that by about junior year. Um, so that's just a little tip, Mark. I thought I'd throw that out there for you. It doesn't hurt to buy uh, buy the books at the start of the semester. No, but uh, Coach, Coach Haas, how, how did the team do overall academically uh, this past year? Uh, we did uh, the best we've ever done. Uh, they, uh, they had a, almost a 3-4 in the fall. And then made a three seven 
in, in the spring. So um, incredible grades. I think it really shows that, like Mark said, he didn't have the golf at the time. And I really think it shows what kind of students they could be. Now they've got to be able to balance golf or whatever your sport is and the academics. And um, really, really nice job. I mean, the seniors that went out, Eric and Charlie, both made a 4-0. So I, I think it just is a testament that they, they finished what they started. Um, right. Now, you know, we don't expect the grades. Like Lanny Watkins told me once, means they're spending too much time studying. They should be practicing more. But, uh, <laughs> but they, you know, I'm very, very proud of them. I mean, uh, that, that's really fantastic. We won the overall, uh, it's called the Dean's Cup for the best uh, male athletic team with the best GPA. And, uh, and that goes, uh, Aaron and I, we don't do anything. They, it's all on them. And they, uh, they take the initiative, like Mark meeting you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It, it's one thing to get emails from Kristen or whoever, but you got to follow up with them. And um, our, our players are really good at that, Mike. And, uh, and and then that makes you really happy as a coach. And I would say in my 23 years here, my biggest pet peeve is guys that don't go to class. I, I just think it's disrespectful that all you have to do is go for two or three hours on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and maybe just um, – a couple hours on Tuesday, Thursday. I don't think that's asking a lot. And I think it's good for you actually to uh, learn how to, to listen, pay attention, how to apply things. And then, then when you get to the golf course and you've taken care of your business, now it's your time. Now you spend from one to six playing, hitting balls, practicing, whatever you want to do. And I think the ones that balance that. Um, getting to college is kind of the easy part but it's what you do when you get there and how you handle everything that kind of separates the, the all Americans from, from the, the not all Americans. Coach, I know we have a lot of alums uh, of the program on the call. and I just see Paul McBride and I just wanted to say, Paul, it's great to have you on. And uh, I, I doubt coach has anything, you know, great to say about you, Paul, but maybe we'll give him a moment here to, to say, share uh, a thought or two. I, I love Paul McBride. He kind of got it started up. Owen O'Connell played here in the uh, late 80s, and we called um, Owen a Paul McBride kid, and uh, he said he's, he's a pretty good kid. Both his parents were uh, in the Irish um, education system, so uh, Paul came over and um, did a fantastic job. I mean, uh, I can't thank Paul enough for uh, making the sacrifice, graduating from Wake Forest, um, he was the Portuguese Order of Merit winner a couple years ago, and uh, I, th I still feel like his best golf is ahead of him. Um, you know, he was one, uh, he lost in a playoff at the ACC, which uh, I know he still, it breaks my heart because he was a, a great player for us at Wake, um, all conference, all American. He was uh, somebody play, played on the uh, uh, Walker Cup team, uh, got to go watch him play at. Uh, LA Country Club. So, uh, and all that being said, great family, you know, um, great, great parents, Dave and Trish. And uh, uh, like I said earlier, I played with a lot of former players. I played with Chad Wilfong, I played with Jay Morgan the other day. And the more I'm with Todd Lynch, I play a lot with. And the more I'm around these guys, I realize, you know, kind of what separates the Wake Forest golfer or the Wake Forest student athlete. So, hope you're doing well. Thanks, well, I coach. <laughs> well, I think that's an invitation to come back for the gear closet whenever you want. I don't know. That yeah. just sounds like a like a pretty sweet sweet setup you were just giving. I, I I tell you one thing for sure: we wouldn't be getting a three seven if I was still in school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's great, great. Thanks, coach. Coach, I send me your address, Paul. I'll I'll hook you up with some gear. <laughs> I know you will. I know. Coach, you, you talk about the recruiting of, of kind of now all over the world. I mean, how, how have you been kind of recruiting here these last couple of months? I mean, I think we, we have such a good stable of folks, but I'm sure you're focused on the 21 class and the 22 class. And um, it sounds like you're very hopeful that we're going to be playing next year. But but how does the recruiting play out? Um, I'll, I'll start that and then Aaron can take over. But, um, you know, we're seeing – we're getting a ton more emails. We're getting a, uh, a bunch more golf swings. And they're, they're trying to, the, the recruit is trying to tell you what we've done before. Um, you know, Coach Aaron and I really like to see him play. 
and unfortunately they're not getting to. So uh, you kind of have to do your, your background checks and your, your word of mouth. And in, in a good way, it slowed it down a little bit. Um, we, we've already got two verbal commitments for 21 that, that we really like. And um, so we're kind of just getting into the 22 class and they're gonna start getting to play. Um, so they'll get their moment, they'll get their time. We'll kind of do it off of what we've seen on the internet and um, follow any leads we get. We've got a lot of people that will email us or call us, say, hey, there's a good player you need to, to look out for. But at the moment, until July 31st, there's no recruiting in person. So uh, that's difficult. Go, Jim. Yeah, it's just to follow up with Coach said, I, we, we love to get out there and, and kind of see recruits almost struggle a little bit and see how to handle, you know, adversity or whether it's a bad hole, how they interact with their parents, um, you know, what they're doing when it's going well, um, and obviously kind of evaluate. Then obviously we look to try and get to know them a little bit more and uh, that's stuff conversations and uh, possibly visits. Uh, it's impossible to do all of that right now, which really is going to hurt uh, the 2021 class, I feel like. Um, but um, thankfully, Coach and I have, um, you know, secured two verbal commitments from two of the top players in the country, uh, one from um, Maryland and one originally from Oregon. Um, so we're very excited about them. And um, as we discussed with the team, we have a very young team. Um, and I think, although very young, extremely experienced. So, um, you know, we're in a great spot moving forward and um, gonna, gonna keep this momentum that we have, I feel like, and uh, hopefully elevate it to the next level. Coaches, I, uh, and Mark, you could chime in here too. I, I would imagine when that student athlete, that prospective student athlete gets to put their eyes on campus and see the Arnold Palmer Golf Complex and the, and the Haddock House, the Jesse Haddock House, or the Diane Daly Learning Center, um, or just campus in general, you guys could probably feed off of those reactions and bringing them over to Old Town and, and letting them see that. Um, how are you bringing some of campus to these kids? Will I go, Coach? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, well, true, a number, number of different avenues, but as Coach mentioned, we're getting a lot of emails. Um, I think our social media has has kind of helped um, make some of the, the younger generations aware of what we have. And and like you said, Mike, uh, it's so impressive when you get here. I think that's our biggest challenge. If we can if we can get a prospect to Wake Forest, they're usually going to come here. Um, it just uh, it just is so convenient uh, with with the ability to walk to practice and and Old Town being adjacent to, to campus as well um, but true uh, true couple of initiatives um, that you've helped us with obviously um, in in kind of building the brand of wake wake forest men's golf and, and and the golf in general or women's team doing so well I think the exposure that that's given us on a on a national stage is where we're seeing emails come in from California we're seeing them come in from you know Spain and Ireland and you know, even the Latin American countries. So um, I think our uh, presence both in social media and uh, obviously being very successful and a top program um, in the rankings every year has certainly uh, catapulted us to, to be in front of the best players in the world. Coach, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help everybody out and I appreciate those. I think there's a video that we wanna show about some of the improvements that have There's a, a video, I might have been on mute, sorry, about some of the um, improvements that have happened at the facility and for the program. So here we go, Coach. Thanks for putting this together. And we'll be back in a second. You all enjoy.
I don't have any sound here, but uh, if you guys can hear me, this is our new turf at the Diane Daly Learning Center. Uh, we've uh, upgraded that, put in four cups, as you can see there, for long lag putting, um, as well as uh, water fountains right there um, for keeping our athletes hydrated, and also some hitting mats that um, have been inlaid into the ground uh, in order to um, improve performance, really, uh, avoid injury. Uh, we're looking in here at the putt view room, um, which has been very well received. It's a place where our athletes can practice at night and uh, wonderful technology that has holograms come down and, and basically give you the line and speed of a putt. Um, the answer to the test. Not an academic issue, coach, just so we could throw that out there, the answer to the test and just say it. Okay. Yeah. There it is. So you can see as it comes down from the ceiling and every player is different. We put all our guys in there. Some like to see the dots. Some like to see half the line. Some like to see the aiming point. This is from Matt and Sarah Crawford. We just put in a beautiful Verdin clock uh, with the running Deacon man. We got these targets. Now they don't look like much, but they're really nice. They got the rollers on the back. You can move them around. And then Coach Aaron would hook us up right here. Yeah, this is a this is going to be a wonderful addition. It's it's the best uh, way of traveling for our guys and the team. We we've got six captain chairs back there. Um, you got the airplane uh, lockers for uh, personal items. PlayStation, thirty two inch TV wonderful speakers, internet, so that they can continue to do homework or um, connect with family and friends. Um, it's an extra long bus. Um, and what we're told is the best one of any program. Well, I think you can live in that thing if you needed to. If uh, you got to go in a world of uh, some isolation, that might be the, the first thing you run to and see how far you can get on a tank of gas. But that's right. Um, Coach, maybe, maybe, and, and Mark, what was it like for you seeing all that? Because some of that you might not have had the chance to see yet, huh? No, not yet. No, um, it's it's been coming though. We've been we've been waiting for it, and when we saw the the design, and um, it was meant to be uh, really good. But then to actually see the like to see the whole in inside, and um, it just shows how lucky we are to have to have something like that, and. Uh, obviously our donors are, are so good to us and they even have just even like the facilities in general we're, we're spoiled to be honest and you kind of take it for granted sometimes but um i think it just just seeing those images there just shows you know the facilities we do have at wake forest and it is by far the best in in the country and um you know we're given every opportunity to improve and things like that really do help we're uh we're glad, and I know those on the call are, are always so happy and, and excited to support you and your teammates. And coach, we'll talk about women's program here in a minute and how that that partnership works. Because I know a lot of these efforts um, that are happening at the facility are, are joint amongst both families, the men's women, the men's and women's golf program family. But coach, maybe talk a little bit about um, what what's happened over the last year or two, men's golf committee. And I know we have some of those. Uh, members, so Charlie Shorgel, Alan Hobbs, Todd Lynch on, um, and, and a handful of others. But what, what's what's been the secret maybe to some of these improvements and galvanizing, um, you know, this the support? Well, I, do we have the restricted account now that, that uh, you've helped start and, and a lot of these people on the call, quite frankly, have, um, have stepped up and um, given us these opportunity to improve a little bit. Uh, to our operating budget to be able to give young men like Mark Power and Alex Fitzpatrick, Parker, all these guys on the team, uh, Eric Bay, gives them a little bit um, something to to be proud of, obviously, and to call home. It's right there on campus. We've got, you know, brand new balls. We've redone the tee. Um, we, you saw the hitting mats there. We got the van. Um, we cannot ever thank you enough for that. Um, it means... It means the world, Wake Forest, through these difficult times, has really, really stuck together. 
And I kind of have to back up a little bit to Bob McCreary, who kind of got it started with the football. And then Ben Sutton said, you know, I'm tired of getting our butts kicked. Let's improve this. And, and Mitch Shaw. And uh, unfortunately, it's not on this video here, but the nutrition center is off the charts. And the new weight room and Coach Pass and everything that, um, that money, quite frankly, and, and dedication and, and the love for Wake Forest has, has really helped our golf programs. Um, all our teams are, are doing very well. If you look at it, we've got a, a really good product. And I think people like that product because it is young, young men and women that go to class and, and give their very best and, you know, to, for the black and gold of Wake Forest. And um, Coach Yann and I, we try to get those, those kids that have that character that, that appreciate that, you know, it's a big word that's not used much today in the world and appreciation. And I think that's all that the people that give, they're just looking for appreciation, a little recognition of, of, of helping a young athlete. And I think that uh, is very commendable. Coach, again, back to, uh, I think your leadership and, and leadership throughout the university to support both men's and women's golf and, and um, continue to have it be uh, a program that we want to see successful and, and supported in, in a number of ways, um, but but excited about the future. And, and I know there's some challenges ahead, um, budget budgetarily and, and, and others, um, but I'll say it, and, and I know you've said it, many thanks to those on the call that are finding ways to, to get behind the program. So Mark, yourself, and your teammates, and the women's program, um, Y'all are pretty, pretty good, and I think everybody wants to see some some trophies raised and see you all graduate as well and, and, and everything that goes with it. Um, so there's a lot of excitement, for sure. A lot of people care, and that, that makes you feel special. Um, they really do. I mean, uh, congratulations to Coach Kim Llewellyn and the women's team. They ended up the season, unfortunately, ranked number one. Not unfortunately, but they didn't get to – and we ended up number five, and we were the top-ranked team in the ACC. So we felt like we, we had a little momentum from last year, making it to the quarterfinals in the Elite Eight and finishing third overall in the stroke play. And uh, by great plays, players, uh, Lee Detmer and Cameron Young carried us there. So we, we were ready to make another run and even a deeper run. And, um, but, but that's not going to change. Nothing. I know we're, we're, we're slowed down a little bit, but Coach Aaron and I really feel like it's still coming, and uh, I think you can see the momentum we've established, and uh, by all the good things, um, all the great people that have, that have helped. And uh, I'm so proud to be a Demon Deacon. Uh, it's been my 24th year coming up. Hard to believe. So uh, need to get need to get something done this year. Let's, let's uh, hopefully we'll get to play. Coach, love it. And uh, we're gonna do a lightning round here in a minute. We'll have some fun, Coach. One one thing, and this came up from. Um, Doug, Doug Hartsum on the call, and also Anthony Tang. Just what, what do you see, you know, being something on the horizon that you all are feeling will help add to, you know, everything that, that you have in place? Well, probably number one, the continued support, uh, the, the love for Wake Forest golf. Um, you know, right now we're in a nice shape. Uh, we've got a couple track bands, which is, you know, expensive technology that we were able to get. We've got the new van. We've got, uh, like I said, the, the range itself has been done. Um, we have two Bermuda greens at the bottom, and then we have uh, two bent greens up top. Um, so, so we're in a nice spot. Um, Old Town's been great to us. Like I said, we get to play over there, Bermuda run as well for Scythe Country Club. So it's, we, we, we have a good relationship in town. Um, I'm sure there'll be something that, that'll come up, but um, I mean, come on, man, we're pretty spoiled here. We're, uh, we're, we're great, been taken care of uh, in, in a great way. So, um, but uh, I, I, I want to play some golf. I want to watch some golf, <laughs> but I want, to, I want to watch these guys play. I, I bet you got, you all can't yeah, so, wait to get out there. Coach Aaron, anything, anything? Yeah, I just, just one thing there, um, because of our amazing support that we have from, from our donors, we're in a position uh, to bring back one of our players for an extra year. Um, as I'm sure everybody knows, Wake Forest is an extremely expensive school um, and we had a senior or highest ranked player in, in the world rankings in Eric Bay that uh, we petitioned for a waiver for an extra year of eligibility 
um, and we were granted that waiver. Um, NCAA, you know, basically said that we've got to come up with the money and our supporters really have stepped up. And um, I think uh, there's no way that you could spend that money better than, than giving a, a player like Eric, who's been so loyal to the program and, and such a, um, a big impact player for the program that extra year to, to, to lead his team and his teammates, um, hopefully to some more trophies. Mark, that's a great example, you all, of, of giving someone an opportunity to come back and, and finish kind of what they probably had envisioned four or five years ago during the recruitment process. Mark, how pumped are you to have Eric coming back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think everyone knows how good a player he is. And um, just to even have someone like him with his experience back in the program, you know, that kind of team leader um, is massive. And we have three new young guys coming in, so I'm sure Eric will be a great example to those like he was for me. And I'll obviously try and do my best to help the guys settle in. Um, but I think as a, you know, as, as regards to the team, he definitely, um, he adds, adds a lot. And um, to have Eric coming back is massive. And, um, you know, it's just going to be an extra boost. And I really think next year, uh, all going well, we'll have um, a lot of trophies coming up, hopefully. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to just getting back playing, seeing the guys again, and just want to get back competing again. Well, I know everyone on the call look for, looks forward to that. Uh, speaking of competing, let's let's size you and the coaches up here on a couple of things. Um, favorite course in the United States? Mark, you go first. East Lake. I bet. <laughs> Coach Aaron. It's victory there. Way to go, Mark. That's an easy one for me. Augusta National. There you go. That's pretty, pretty sweet. I've heard of it. I'm going to say uh, Pebble Beach. Awesome. How about international, Coach? Why don't you start off? Uh, I would say um, where I watched Webb play the uh, uh, Walker Cup, Royal County Down, would be my favorite uh, course overseas. Coach Aaron. Old Head of Kinsale in County Cork. Uh, it's about half an hour from where I live and some of the most dramatic views in golf, but uh, it's just a fantastic golf course. My, my happy place. Mark? Uh, Le Hinch Golf Club in County Clare. The Palmer Cup was meant to be there this year. Uh, it obviously got cancelled, so it'll be in uh, it'll be in Bay Hill instead, but Le Hinch is my yeah, number one. Love it. I love it. Um, I got we got some people commenting about Old Head and a few other spots, and uh, that that's fun to see. And y'all, don't forget this chat feature as we, we spend a couple more minutes with coaches and and, and Mark. Feel free to to also add um, some some features there. All right, Mark, I'll let you get this one first. This is this is a layup. Who's gonna win in a, a head to head to head with you, coach and coach? <laughs> Depends what tees Coach Haas is playing off. I heard Coach Haas. That's a good answer. Fairway. That's a good answer. I heard Coach Haas makes up his own tees half the time. I mean, he can, he'll play to a different fairway from a different tee box, or he'll start on a different fairway. Uh, but his mind game, so I think I can take him, so I'll, I'll, I'd say me. All right. Coach Aaron is a weapon around the greens, so, you know, he could, when he gets his putter rolling, it can be dangerous. Coach Haas, nothing to add. No, I'm taking me. I'm taking me from the uh, from the senior from the senior tees. Mark's right. I, I they they out hit hit me so far that if I play back at their tees, I never get to see them for the day. So if I play up a little bit, then we at least drive it around each other, and I can observe and I can watch. And I think that's what Coach Aaron and I bring to the table is we play with them enough, and then we realize all right, these are their strengths, these are their weaknesses, and then we can tailor their practice. And, and their their mindset of bits and how to get them better in other areas. And uh, I don't know how much time we got. I wish we could get some questions here, but I do want to add that Mark, um, he did a wonderful job today. Very well spoken. Um, stuff like this is invaluable. The way you've handled yourself, and uh, you can see why you're a great champion and, and and becoming a really really fine player. So nice work. I would I would agree. You get the golf clap from me for. For your effort today, for sure. Really um, look, everybody's got it. Everybody do a little golf clap if you can if you're on camera. Yeah. Grateful for that. Um, Coach, let's start with you on this one. Um, 
what's the uh, athletically speaking? And this comes from uh, a few different folks. But what, what's a quality that you feel is the most valuable to have from an athletic uh, athletic standpoint? I know I've heard you talk a little bit about you know multi sport athletes and things like that, but would love to hear hear from you now. Uh, I'll go first. I, I think number one is being competitive. Um, you you can be you can lose and not like it and not act like a jerk and get better at it. Some people are bad losers, but I think deep down this game of golf is very frustrating and you have to be able to put it back out on the line every time and just go to bed at night and say, you know what, I'm going to get it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get it. And I get that a little bit from my uncle Bob Goldby, but uh, it's, it's a very, very tough game to master. Just when you think you got it, you don't. Just when you don't think you'll ever get it, you find it. So you really have to have that emotional stability and that ride that emotional wave and become a better better version of yourself, if you will. So uh, I love competitors. I love guys that don't give in. Um, that That's my number one thing. Coach Aaron, and then maybe Mark, and then we, we do have some questions popping up, so I'll bring those up before we wrap uh, wrap up our call. Yeah. Just real quick, I'm going to go back to your question, who's going to win the match? I think that's pretty easy to, to figure out. We can do that here in a couple of months. <laughs> and then we're going to tell everybody the answer. Um, but, I think we're going to do that. That's yeah, done. Hey, we'll televise that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then your, you know, your, your next question, what, what we look for from an athletic standpoint, I guess, uh, from the mental side, the biggest common denominator I see with, with great players is their belief system. Um, you know, I think deep down, if if they feel like they can do it and, and they do have a strong belief system in place, um, I think that just leads to consistency and confidence. Um, and, you know, I think everybody on this call who, who's familiar with golf knows that if, if you think you can't do something in golf, then usually you're right. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, from, from a, I guess, a technical aspect, um, I, I personally think the first and last shots are the most important. Um, I think that if you can drive the ball long and straight in today's game, um, and then obviously from eight feet and in, um, if you're elite in those two areas, then I think you can make a lot of money in this game. Mark, thanks, Coach, for that. Yeah, I think. I would pretty much reiterate uh, everything that, you know, Coach Aaron and Coach Haas has said. Uh, I think personally, I'm a really competitive player and I think that does help me a lot. Um, you know, if you're st ever struggling out there, just that competitiveness to just, you know, grind out a score um, or just, you know, just give it your all. I think no matter how poorly you're playing, you can always kind of, you know, figure something out. And um, I think that's a, a trait that's really important in this game because if you're not willing to, you know, grind it out, as I said, you know, it's, it's going to be tricky. So I think, um, you know, just having that toughness uh, between your between your ears, I guess, as well, because you need to be mentally strong in this game. So I kind of, that'll probably be it for me. So everybody heard it. It's not about, you know, just short game. It's not about off the tee. It's it's between the ears, as Mark, Mark put it so simply, as is uh, so much in life. Um, one question that came up, and it's back to Eric Bay, um, and, and Eric's coming back. It, the question is, are you getting more money for scholarships? And I think, Aaron, and, and I don't want to misspeak, but I think the NCAA is allowing that kind of unique red shirt. But we had to come up with his scholarship funds. Is that accurate? Essentially, how it works is they've, they've allowed us for one year to go over our team limits. Our team team limits are the same as everybody else in Division One, where we have four and a half scholarships. So for this next year coming up, they've allowed us to grant Eric a scholarship um, and put us over that. There is stipulations with, with the uh, waiver um, that will affect us in future years to where essentially we need to pay whatever we go over, which will be a full scholarship, back to the NCAA. Um, so we will have, uh, in the year 2025, 2026, we will have three and a half scholarships instead of four and a half scholarships. Um, but, uh, to the question, the only 
reason we're able to bring Eric back is because of our supporters and making it possible to have um, the dollars in our restricted account to 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 pay for his tuition and room and board. I, I will just say as well, Eric was forced into a situation in, in a waiting game where he was um, he had to be put on the transfer list as such or a transfer portal. Um, and we I received tens of calls um, immediately and Eric was uh, was was had plenty of options and was uh, was offered a hundred percent scholarship to go to the University of Florida and thankfully told him no I'm going to finish what I started and I'm going to lead my team so uh, we're very very proud of Eric for that and I think that's a, a testament to, to the type of man he is and and the program that we have here at Wake. Go Deeks with that um, that's, that's a great great story and I like the little side jab at Florida so everybody let's keep that off of uh, part of the interruption and all those other shows um, but I, I like what you did there coach subtle. Um, Y'all, we, we are so grateful for your time and joining us today. Mark, thank you for, for being a part of the call. I want to be respectful to kind of what we said and coaches uh, grateful for you being a part of this. Appreciate our sponsor, Kelly Office Solutions. Um, Coach Haas and Mark, maybe Mark, any any final thoughts? And, and maybe Coach Haas will we'll let you wrap it up. Um, personally, I just want to, um, you know, thank our donors, thank our supporters. Um, in times like this, it's important that, you know, everyone comes together and just supports our program because um, we are very lucky and without our support, we wouldn't really be able to do the things we, you know, we do and hopefully in the future we can do. So uh, massive thanks to our supporters and uh, just to the guys, looking forward to seeing everyone again. Um, just hang in tough. It is, it is frustrating, you know, these times when, you know, you can't really compete or, you know, do the things you want to do. But I think it will come good, hopefully, in a couple of months and... Uh, just really looking forward to seeing everyone again and um, just competing back in goals. So, uh, go Deeks. Go Deeks. Coach Haas, thanks, Mark. You know, we, we've talked a lot here today in this hour about uh, how everybody has helped us. I, I think we need to reciprocate a little bit. How can we help you out there? You know, we're not the only uh, – people are struggling. People are um, going through a tough time like everybody else. Um, some people more fortunate than others, but if, if we can help, if the golf program can help, if the university can help, um, you know, we're here, we're here for you. And whether it's a phone call, uh, I've already got a couple of uh, emails from guys that need new golf bags. So, uh, <laughs> and they want their name on it. So I'm like, I'll get right on that. So uh, anyway, if that makes them happy. And uh, so anyway, I, um, it, it does go both ways. And I think that's uh, the message I think we need to send that, um, Thank you for everything you do for us, but hey, what can you do for what can we do for you? So, go Deeks. Coach, with that, thank you, and, and thank again everybody on the call. It is uh, it's nice to see many of you, or see at least the names pop up, and can't wait to see you back on campus or following our guys or our women's team uh, on the course here soon. Um, we wish everybody a great rest of the day, great rest of the week. Stay safe, and uh, as Coach said, if there's anything we can do for you here at Wake. Please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Hope you all have a great, great day and, and go Deeks. Go Deeks. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Y'all have a good one.